Hey guys, let's talk about wheel hop for a second. Wheel hop sucks. Some cars have it, some cars don't with their factory suspension. But the fifth gen Camaros are notorious for wheel hop. If you're just trying to race the guy out the hole or trying to do a burnout show off in front of your friends and all what you get is massive rear wheel hopping up and down. It, it could be embarrassing. It could rattle your brains. Your teeth could fall out, damage your suspension. All this stuff could happen. Very bad situation. Now, in this case, it could be fixed by a couple of small suspension modifications. And I'm gonna show you what's the most effective and the cheapest way to start. And it'll be eliminating that wheel hop, so then you can get out there and start pulling buddies on the racetrack and also smoking burnouts. Now let's take a step back and talk about wheel hop. For some of you, you might not know what that is. Now wheel hop happens when the rear tires or front tires, if your front wheel drive, begin to slip and lose traction. And instead of having the wheels plant down evenly and take off, they actually they begin to hop, which is a failure in the suspension of certain components as far as bushings, trail arms, or tie rod ends. They begin to flex, and that's what creates this literal wheel hopping up and down, which is how they got the name wheel hop. It can be very violent and also cause damage into your rear suspension components, even your axles, your U joints, bushings, tie rod ends. Everything could be a factor in it getting damaged during wheel hop. So, this is why you definitely want to get this fixed, or you could just be boring with your car and never launch or do a burnout. No, not for me. Let me show you the first item that will get you closer to eliminating that wheel hop. All right guys, so a great first step on eliminating the wheel hop and what part you should buy, I would go with the BMR trailing arms. Let's show you what the difference are between the BMR and the back. You can tell that these, they're just crappy stamp steel. You know, they're not even welded all the way through. They're just welded there and there. Pretty thin gauge. As for the BMR, they're probably twice as thick. Gusseted all around connections. And this one comes equipped with polyurethane bushings with a Zerk fitting so you can grease them. These obviously just have standard rubber bushings. So let's get started. So the car that we're gonna be installing this on is my 2012 SS. So first things first, gotta get this wheel off. Okay guys, so once you get the wheel off, this is what we're removing, this trail arm right here. So it's very easy to, to uh, remove. 18 millimeter here. This nut in the back is welded on, so you just go from behind, back off that bolt. The bottom portion is right here. There's a nut, the bolt that runs through. You're gonna obviously have to hold the other end to take this nut off, because the bolt's just gonna be spinning. So uh, let's get to it. nut is off you're gonna run into a problem you try to do that and then look it's hitting the lower control arm now the first thing that you'll think when this happens you're like crap I'm gonna have to unbolt this and drop it down from the spindle and all that craziness no let me show you a little trick you take out this bolt off the tie rod and this will give the whole spindle assembly enough movement to wiggle that bolt out. Once we took that bolt out, kind of jiggled. Now this whole assembly can move. Pull outward with one arm, wiggle the bolt out with the other. Easy peasy, comes right out. Then your whole trailing arm is out. All right, I think you got the old one out. Let's put the new one in in exactly the reverse order. Now guys, when reinstalling the new BMR trailing arms, you have to remember that everything is gonna be a lot more tighter, the tolerances are gonna be closer. So it's not gonna be a drop right in type of install. Tighter tolerances, everything is gonna be a lot tighter fit. 
So this, like the factory one, as you could tell, with the uh, polyurethane bushings, the tolerances are so close that it doesn't doesn't really want to go in. So I'll give you a little trick to this. You get a floor jack and you just want to apply a little bit of pressure underneath it. So actually what I would do first, you would slide the back bolt in first. Let's go. Hold it up there. Just a bit wind up. Okay. So now right underneath the control arm, you want to go right, up right there. Now you want to line it up to where just about even on both sides. I just got a little bit of pressure, right? You could give it a little bit more. And as you can see, boom. See how it drops right in? But it's very important that the two sides of the trailing arms are equally on each side of the bushing. So that way when you apply the weight, it'll basically force it in there. And as you can tell, it's in now. Lower the jack back down. You have to take off the back bolt because this has to be adjusted in and then I'll show you how to put the other bolt in. Okay, so now you just you shimmy shimmy so you get the hole lined up which is about right there. Feed the bolt through. Of course you gotta pull again with your right right or left arm whichever side you're coming through and it gives you enough room for the bolt to come through because you took off the tie rod. All right, then get that tight. You don't you don't have to torque it down actually right now because you just want to get it in there just so it doesn't fall out. When you hook up this part, you're gonna think, okay, well what? You just raise it up and everything's gonna line up. You throw the bolt in, right? Now, as you can tell, the hole is not lined up. It's way off. So you're asking, shit, how do you get that lined up? Well. Almost the same principle on how to put on the bolt in the front. You're gonna jack it up with the jack. You're gonna jack up the suspension. And by doing that, it's actually gonna push the trailing arm in. And then it'll get you to line it up. So let's just do that. And once you get it jacked up, the bolt will just go right in. The torque spec to these are 85 foot pounds. You want 85 foot pounds on this one and also 85 foot pounds the lower ones down here. Let's get these torqued down. Okay guys, so now once those both are torqued down, go ahead and reinstall your tie rod, which is the one 18 millimeter boat. Uh, this springs a little bit so you just gotta feed the bolt in first push down find the hole the rudder on and i would use a ratchet but i'm lazy okay so everything's torqued down tie rods in trailing arm bolts are in you think you're uh you're all good to go ready to put the wheels on and do burnouts right wrong what is the one thing I forgot to do before putting the wheel back on? Any takers, anybody? Yes, there are Zerk fitting on this connection for a reason, on this bushing. You need to grease this bad boy. Now I can show you from underneath. There it is right there. Zerk fitting. Now that fitting, obviously, you gotta get a grease gun, put some grease in there, and you'll, you'll pump in grease until you start seeing it spool out the side. That's when you know you're good. So let's get that going. So this is the grease gun I use. It's a standard grease gun, standard Zerk end on it. You can find these at any hardware store. Not too expensive, you put a tube of grease inside, you're good to go for a really long time because this tube of grease goes a long way. Grab the end of the grease gun, insert it into the Zerk fitting until you hear a little snap like that, and then start pumping away. And now, I start seeing some spew out on both sides. As you can see, you can see some grease starting to come out. That's perfect. Don't want any more, it's just gonna make a mess. We're greased, we're bolted in. Now we can put the wheel back on and drop her back down on the ground. Hey guys, 
And that's how you install trailing arms on a fifth gen Camaro. This will drastically reduce wheel hop. You'll feel a much stiffer ride in the rear suspension. The back wheels will plant better. You'll be able to launch harder. Also, before I let you guys go, you're probably gonna wanna subscribe to my channel because as you can tell, we got pretty insane builds here. It's a 57 truck, blown in injection. We're upgrading it to EFI. We got a 1956 panel wagon. This is gonna get restored and built on our channel. We even picked up a little quad runner we're gonna restore. That's actually the motor that's gonna go in the panel truck. So we got a lot of cool stuff here. Be appreciative if uh, you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, you know, all that good stuff that YouTubers want. Mods for the Camaro, more mods for the truck, all these projects you see here. So be able to stay tuned. But until then, it's Captain Costino. I'll see you next time. Peace.